dear students welcome back to this third lecture in the previous lecture we had uh, in the previous lecture we had talked about uh, existence and uh, uniqueness of solutions which are which we have called the Picard's theorem, Picard's existence result and uniqueness theorem. We had also um, verified the theorem using examples. In this lecture, we are um, going to do what is called the Picard's Picard successive approximation, that is Picard's iteration method. It's more or less the proof of uh, Picard's theorem, but we will not. Uh, do a um, elaborate proper uh, proof uh, which is quite involved for your level so what we will do that we will just uh, give you the idea behind picard's uh, theorem existence theorem and uh, and, uh, and then give you the algorithm of i mean whichever was uh, so we give the algorithm which picard had motivated to obtain the solution required for an ODE. So before that, I would like to summarize uh, uh, what we are going to do. So, so far I have in general talked about ordinary differential equation and so on. So now uh, in this course, we will mostly be dealing with uh, first order ODE and higher order ODEs which are simple to solve where we can obtain exact solutions and so on. So. In the first order situation, we are going to cover the following topics in the first order. So the first that one that we are going to start with today is the is the Picard's method of uh, successive approximation, which we will do in this lecture. This is and this falls under the part of approximate method. So you don't get an exact uh, closed form solution or a formula for the solution I mean in some cases you can but in general you will not so so it falls under the category of approximate method so in this course for first order we will do two types of approximate uh, uh, two approximate methods one is the Picard's uh, uh, successive approximation which we will cover in this lecture and the second is the method of isoclines which we will deal later and then uh, we will see the following six uh, types of first order ODE and these six types are special in the sense that you can uh, write down a closed form solution uh, of these ODEs okay so this is what we will cover uh, after I mean after uh, this lecture so we'll actually begin in this lecture itself I mean start in this so the order in which uh, we might be doing in this course is that uh, first we will uh, because we uh, we had covered Picard's theorems in the previous lecture so just to maintain a so just to maintain the continuity uh, we will be doing the Picard's uh, we will be doing the Picard's uh, successive approximation method today uh, so that you can relate it with the Picard's theorem and kind of see the connections because it's very close to the existence theorems proof and so on uh, then uh, we will jump to which is probably the next lecture uh, we will kind of set up the uh, foundation for doing all these six methods so from next week we will be doing these lectures uh, which is in this order that separable uh, first we'll do separable OD homogeneous exact linear Bernoulli and one degree uh, polynomial coefficients these things will be covered and then after this uh, We will cover the second approximate method, which is the method of isoclines Okay, this is the order in which we will do with this We should be done with the first order OD and then we will move to higher order OD Okay, second and higher order simpler ODs So that's the plan for uh, this course, okay Okay so now let's do uh, now let's motivate the Picard successive approximation. So recall from the previous lecture, last lecture, that our aim was to 
solve an initial value problem and we had talked about the existence of we had talked about the existence of uh, the initial value problem in the previous lecture under some condition which is f being continuous similarly we also talked about uh, the uniqueness of this initial value problem so this 3.2 is precisely what we have written down here okay this is 3.2 which we had introduced in the previous lecture the domain is i which is an interval in r i is the closed uh, interval i so you fix a point x naught and you are given the ODE. We said this is a special form of ODE where it is linear in the highest order, which is the uh, first order. Okay, and uh, yeah, and this x naught and the value of y is given at x naught. So we have we always we have so we have already seen the theorem that this ODE, uh, this initial value problem under conditions on f has an existence and also some further conditions on f has a unique solution okay uh, what is the proof of that uh, solution so we will give it uh, more or less an idea behind the proof of that result so note that if we take this initial value problem if i integrate both sides of this initial value problem right let's say from the given point to the point so the integration limits of integrations are uh, there is a uh, point x not given to us where the value is given to some arbitrary point y okay so then you think of this variable as t you think of uh, this variable also as t and then you integrate over the x uh, t variable right so if you do this integration you can immediately see that what uh, the term on the left hand side here is going to give you y x right it's going to give you y x minus y naught because the value of y at x naught is y naught y x minus y naught equal to integral of x naught plus f t y is also a function of t and dt this is precisely what we have written here okay so just by integrating which is and this is convenient in this form of ODE right so just by in, uh, integrating if the assuming that f, f is all nice to integrate and so on so this ODE can be seen as this integral equation okay now this is an equation where there is no derivative involved but there is an integral involved and the unknown y is appearing both on the left hand side here and also here inside f inside the integral so solving this initial value problem or this od is equivalent to solving this integral equation okay so they are equivalent so asking for a solution here is same as asking for a solution here okay and this equivalence is of course under some conditions on the f right f has to be integrable and so on so let's assume that we are in all those nice situations okay if we can do all this then these are equivalent problems so this differential equation is same as this integral equation this differential equation is same as this integral equation so solving for the initial value problem above is same as solving for y in the integral equation here so now we will concentrate instead of concentrating here we will concentrate here we have also taken care of this initial value here we have used it here so now what we do if you one can view this integral equation as as a map how do we um, i define a t from the space of all continuous functions on i bar to the space of all continuous function right when i say space of all i mean the set of all continuous functions to the set of all continuous functions and what is this map this is a map which will take any continuous function and give a give another continuous function ty and this ty is defined like this and how is it defined this is precisely what you had on the right hand side here this is what we call as ty 
okay so we, we are just using this right hand side here to define a map okay so that's the map that we have and uh, of course if uh, y is continuous and if ty has to be continuous which means this part here has to be continuous it depends on uh, f right it depends on f and so on so let's assume that f uh, which is why i have said here under some conditions you can ensure that this ty is continuous okay if we can do all that then uh, i can we have a map t from the space so the set of all continuous functions to set of all continuous functions what is the advantage of defining this map t is this that now you see if you look at this uh, so this ODE was converted to this integral equation. Now you look at this integral equation, okay, together. What you see here, this is y, uh, sorry, y, yeah, this is y equal to whatever is on the right hand side is precisely this definition, which is ty, right, which means solving this ODE is same as solving this integral equation which is same as solving this that is finding all y such that y equal to ty in other words the solution of this differential equation or the solution of this integral equation is nothing but the fixed point of this map t okay so finding the solution is same as so what we have we have rephrased our original problem of finding the solution to a differential equation as finding the fixed point to some map t right because if i find the fixed point of t then this condition is satisfied which is, means this condition is satisfied which means we have a solution to the integral equation so that's the idea so we have just equated we have just said solving the ODE is same as finding the fixed point of some map and the map is given here right so this is where now Picard's successive approximation comes so now this is the relation that he makes and that for solving for the ODE is same as finding the fixed point of this map now how do we find the fixed point of this map okay i'll just uh, illustrate here and then we will look we will understand this uh, idea via some example so what was picard's idea is this he first said okay uh, we have to solve this ode which means that i need to find a y which we don't know such that what we know is that at x naught it takes the value y naught the value of y at x naught is uh, x naught is y naught so he says let's let me start let me start with the with a u naught uh, let me start with a u naught which has this property that at x naught its value is y naught okay so this u naught may not satisfy this condition the ODE it may not satisfy this but that doesn't matter that's what Picard says he just says start with a function which satisfies the initial condition okay take a u naught which at x naught is y naught so it so it matches this initial condition okay then he says this y naught so you pick a continuous function okay take a u naught such that which is which is continuous so u naught is u naught is continuous take a u naught such that it satisfies the initial condition so this u naught being a continuous function is in the set of all continuous functions right now you since it's in set of all continuous function there is an image of u naught under t so there is a t u naught right so you have a u naught so this u naught there's an image of t u uh, I mean, uh, so there's an image of u naught which under t which is t u naught let's call this u, t u naught as u1 okay you have u1 and by the definition of t and so on u1 is also continuous 
So since u1 is continuous, it, so it belongs to the set of all continuous functions. So now you define your u2 as tu1. This is also continuous. So you can go ahead like this. Okay. And the fact that and the fact that we are choosing our u1. So u0 initially did not have to satisfy this ODE, right? But when we choose u1 as the image of tu0, what we are choosing is we are choosing u1 as the image by plugging in u0 here. So you put u0 here and compute this uh, integral. What you get is t, what you get, uh, sorry, yeah, if you put u0 here, which means you are putting u0 here, here you are putting this, you are replacing this with u0. So you are computing t u0 that you are calling as u1. So you are actually what you are actually doing here is that you are getting u1 as a solution to that ODE where you have replaced this inside y with u0. So you plug in u0, solve for this initial value problem, and whatever the solution is u1. That's what this equation means. Okay. Okay, so what just because it has been so what we have said is that this solution to this ODE solution to this ODE is the fixed point of this. So how to get a fixed point? Start with a U naught which has this which satisfies the initial condition, then choose U1 as a solution. To this initial value problem with u naught here, which is same as saying take the image of u naught, you get u1, keep doing this u2 t u1 and so on. So now what you have, you have a sequence of functions, let's call it uk. In sequence of functions and under some conditions on the f. You can actually show that this uk will converge and it will converge to say some y and that y is the fixed point that you are looking for. That is the uh, argument of Picard. This is the proof that he is uh, giving you. So he is giving you an algorithm to so he's giving you an algorithm to find the fixed point. What the way he's finding the fixed point is by some kind of iteration method, iteration method, right? So you start with some random function, which only satisfies the initial value problem. Use that function to solve the initial value problem where, uh, where you plug in what you not here. Repeat this process continuously, okay? Under the conditions on F, that will be a Cauchy sequence. And that will converge to something and that limit will be a fixed point. Okay, this is the idea of Picard successive approximation. Okay, so we will you know, see this via some examples. Okay, so Picard's approximation gives an algorithm to find the fixed point of T. Okay, and in turn, the solution of 3.2, which is what I have explained so far. So let's look at some examples. Okay, so let's uh, so let, let's take this initial value problem. Okay, so there is a y x naught equal to y naught, whatever I explained. So you pick a u naught such that uh, the value of such that the u naught satisfies the initial condition. So u naught of x naught is uh, y naught. Pick a u naught like that. That's the first choice that you make. Now you do t of u naught t of u naught is same as so this is precisely what we have done here so what we have done here is you have chosen a u naught now you use u naught here solve this initial value problem which is this what you obtain is a solution u1 this is same as saying what we have done here is looked at 
the image of u0 and whatever is the image of u0 is nothing but it's the solution of this ODE. Okay, that is how we have obtained T of u0. So if you make this, so you said we said uh, you start with a u0, then you get you look at T u0, and when you get T square u0, you get T cube u0. So this is what we said is uh, u1, we said this is u2, u3 and so on, right? So what we finally are saying is that t power k u0 will converge to some y and that y is the fixed point, okay? So computing the image of u0 under t is same as solving uh, this initial value problem with u0 plugged in, okay? So once we have u1, this is equivalent to, this is precisely what you have here is t of u0. So this is same as this, solving this only. So if you keep going on like this, you have this general formula for the choice of the kth element of the sequence, which is uk is obtained as t of u k minus 1 okay so you you have this uh, formula recursive uh, you have this iterative formula right then uh, what's happening yeah so under some suitable conditions on f this sequence that you obtain uk will converge to some u which will be the solution of the initial value problem okay that's the idea behind picard's uh, method okay now let's look at some examples right uh, we have given you the idea behind the argument so let's understand this via example okay so let's consider this initial value problem so what is your f here your f this is your f your f x y this is your x squared plus y squared is your f x y and your x naught is 0 and your y naught is 1 so what you so what is the idea of picard's uh, algorithm he says first you start with a u naught which which satisfies this condition which is at x no, uh, at 0 it should take the value 1 what is the obvious function that one can think of take the constant function 1 okay it takes 1 everywhere so it will take 1 at 0 as well okay okay so you choose do not to be the constant function 1 then what you do you find t of u0 and what is t of u0 i said wherever in this ode wherever you have u0 you replace with 1 here and solve this initial value problem whatever is the solution that you call as u1 okay t of u0 is u1 okay so if you do that for k equal to 1 you see you have u0 square here u0 is 1 so you have 1 square which is 1 here so this is precisely this if you solve that you get u1 then you plug in u1 here you will get u2 you plug in u2 here you you will get u right you put u0 you get u1 you get u1 here you, i mean so you kind of plug in u1 you will get u2 plug in u2 you will get u3 and so on okay that's the recursive formula that you have for uk now if you find the limit of this sequence of functions right then uh, that limit should be the solution of this uh, ode Okay. 
so u naught is this if we use this formula we see that the first of first so this is zero order approximation this is the uh, this is the first order approximation this is zero order approximation this is the first order approximation we just uh, integrating here we have found this use this u1 here integrate this you will get u2 that's what we have get here so you see already in the second order approximation we already have uh, um, seven terms here okay. and it's like polynomial and you have a seven degree polynomial here you know first with and and in one we already had a cubic uh, polynomial here so if you keep increasing this you will see that uh, you are going to have uh, a polynomial of large degree as you increase your uh, k and the limit of that will uh, will be the solution of this ode okay you can go ahead and, and it's not easy to do so this is which is why i said this is an, this is an approximate method it's uh, in in all cases it may not give you the precise uh, formula but you know how to reach the formula i can get as close to the solution as possible by computing for large case right if you can write down the limit of this directly then you have the uh, solution right whenever you can write down the limit of this directly so here you already see it looks like some kind of power series solution right because it's a polynomial and if k goes to infinity more or less it is going to be something like a power series so so the solution of this uh, ode is uh, is probably has a form of a power series okay so that's one example so it's an approximate method let's give you another example Take the, so you take this initial value problem. So here I have not mentioned domains and everything, but it's uh, if you are looking for real valued solutions, you can uh, very well say that x you cannot allow x to be negative, so x has to be greater than or equal to zero. That should be the domain of. So it should be the positive. I mean the domain should be contained in the positive real line, or no. Or what you call non-negative real line. Okay, so you have this initial value problem. You do the same thing. You first choose a u naught which satisfies this initial condition. In this case as well, we can choose u naught to be the constant function one. Okay, and you go ahead and find uh, the image of uh, u naught which will be your u one, which is by replacing u naught here. You solve this ODE or you find that integral. Okay, so you choose u naught as one, and then you have this formula for u k. But you notice here, since this f, this is the f here, right? This uh, this is the f of x y, and the form of this f of x y, this f of x y does not depend on y. There is no y dependence here. So whatever so whatever u naught that you chose, though you plug it back, that since there is no y dependence here, the choice of your u is not affecting the choice of f here. It's not changing anything. So your u k all have the same formula. In, in, I mean, which means that this is independent of k. So you actually have a constant sequence. Right? There is no k dependence here. It's a constant sequence, so you know its limit, which is itself. So your fixed point is precisely this. This is your solution to this OT, right? So in this case, we have found an exact solution. So in some cases, you can when you can compute the limit exactly, you can get a exact solution. Otherwise, you you can approximate the i mean so you can get closer to the solution by finding your uk for large k okay so this i mean you you will be seeing what is separable od later I have, we have just said that you can it is easy to integrate this right you can just you just integrate this uh, because this is integrable you can actually find the integral of this equation here okay so this is the idea of uh, Picard's method. Okay, fine. So now let's get into. So now our aim is to uh, look at special cases of uh, first-order ODEs 
uh, which are uh, which have closed form and i've listed down some six types which we will be doing in this course so to start with let's introduce another form of writing the writing a differential equation which is the differential form okay in, in the i mean so the total differential form so what is a total differential okay suppose we have a function f okay suppose we have a function f which is from r2 to so basically f is a two variable function it has uh, x and y variable and it uh, it's a real value so you have a two variable function and what is the assumption on the function that they admit continuous first order partial derivatives right because it's a two variable function uh, it, both the, the partial derivative fx and fy first order derivatives they uh, they exist and they are continuous in in its domain omega okay its domain omega then the total differential of uh, this capital f is defined like this which is any uh, so what does this total differential or this definition mean is that any incremental uh, any incremental change in f is nothing but some scalar times incremental change in the x direction and some scalar times the incremental change in y direction okay that is what uh, this total differential form means okay in fact this definition is motivated from uh, the from the chain rule that uh, that you will just see but before that let me just highlight this that though i have given this definition for a two variable function if you have an n variable the same definition is valid right for instance if you have f which is an n variable function okay and belongs to r then you can write down the same definition in this case you let's take i so let's uh, so let's equal to sum over i since the n variable sum is from 1 to n del f by del x i dx i right which is same as what you have here for the i equal to 2 case sorry n equal to 2 case okay so <coughs> this definition can be extended to any uh, n variable function also so there is no difficulty so don't worry about those things we will not be using n variable probably in, uh, in this course so don't worry about that but it's valid okay so now what is the more i mean what is the purpose of this and uh, motivation of this i will explain that why are we introducing this total differential form um, this, I mean, you must have seen this notion of total derivative for multivariable functions in your calculus course in the previous, even the previous course, MTH 101, right? Where you, you have this notion of total derivative that you compute for a um, multivariable function, right? So then, and, and if you have, uh, and then there's this chain rule, right? So, it's, so here this actually comes from that uh, rule. So if you... Uh, think of your x and y variable which is appearing uh, in which are which are the arguments of capital F and if they are themselves functions of some variable let's say some uh, func some variable t right so by chain rule the derivative of uh, right the total derivative of uh, f with respect to t right so the derivative of f with respect to t is nothing but uh, uh, <coughs> Is nothing but uh, del f by del x uh, dx by dt del f by del y dx by dt right this is what chain rule tells you so this form here which we have written here is not is same as this form is just that now we don't take into account the variable t we ignore the variable t okay so now that's what happens so when you actually have the variable uh, so you so we want to see it in a form where we don't worry about what variable is chosen basically the total derivative of this uh, f uh, is the linear combination of incremental change in both x direction and y direction okay that's the idea of this and uh, what is the advantage of doing all these things is that see when we look at a 
od dy by d for instance right when we look at when we write down a derivative like this this is not a fraction right by definition you know this is not a fraction right i cannot uh, i cannot use this like a fraction like a by b form or something this is the limit of fractions right limit of some fractions some change right some uh, some change by some change right basically change in y direction uh, y sorry let's write it properly when you say dy by dx this is not a fraction right this is limit of some fractions so you cannot use them like fractions right this is change in some y direction to change in x direction and limit over those changes right this is this is how you view this right so this is not exactly a fraction so you cannot use it like a fraction it is not like an a by b form or something but more or less uh, they behave like this and um, see here when we do this uh, y is seen as a <coughs> sorry y is seen as a uh, dependent variable x is seen as an independent variable and so on right we don't have to have that kind of a connection here right here x and y are seen as just arguments you can interchange the role of x and y and and so on and that's the advantage here so so viewing a differential equation in the differential form helps you interchange the role of x and y and that's not going to change much of your uh, theory that's the advantage of differential form but we will also uh, see what to worry and keep track when we do this transformation from differential equation to differential form and so on okay that is one is this so first thing you observe that if i have an ode of this form one can always equivalently write that ode in the differential form right for instance, if you have y prime equal to fxy and suppose say um, fxy let's say and this and this does not take 0 anywhere. So this is same as saying uh, y prime is same as saying dy by dy by dx then I, we can write this as uh, 1 by f in fact I don't even have to do that in this case I can trivially do like this dy is equal to f x y dx see that's what I want the previous way in jet we are not we are not uh, treat though this is not a fraction we are treating them like a fraction in the differential form that's the advantage but uh, though we though we are saying we can do this they are not of equivalent uh, i mean they are equivalent what i'm trying to say is that uh, uh, the way you understand this equation and the way you understand this equation are different here when you say this is right this is limit of some change of quotient is equal to this here change in y direction is some something uh, change in x direction multiplied by something okay but they are of the, the same form so the interpretation is a uh, bit different okay but for, uh, but for your level don't worry about it they are same okay they are uh, uh, it is not a very big difference it just you interpreted it differently you rewrite it differently but they are same so this ode can be written in this form so every od of this form can be written in this form similarly every od of this form can be written in the other form dy by dx so if you take this one this can be written in the form of uh, uh, minus m x comma y by n x comma y this is your new f of x y right this is your new f of x y so what we are saying here is that a first order od of this form
can be equivalently written in this form which is the this is called the differential form okay so when you do all these things what you need to worry about is that you are not dividing by zero and so on and so forth right so your n and uh, so this function that comes in the denominator uh, should not go to zero and so on so that is where the I mean issues are and so on okay otherwise they are whenever you can whenever you keep track of that they are of equivalent form so when we say we want to solve for an OD here it's equivalent to saying I want to solve for the differential form here but are they equivalent that's what we are going to say that's the topic of this slide okay because when you change from one form to another and back so on what you are doing are some arithmetic operations right you are going to multiply divide we add subtract and so on uh, when you do this arithmetic operation what can happen is that you may be adding solutions from the original solutions you may be uh, losing solutions and so on so this you can so by moving from uh, here to here and here to here you may be adding and losing solutions and this you need to keep track so though solving them are uh, I mean maybe I mean uh, if, if uh, I mean if you solve them and if you uh, for instance what I'm trying to say is that this I mean the set of all solutions may not match always you may be so you may have added some solutions or you may have removed some solutions okay so what is the advantage of which i have already explained what is the advantage of uh, using the differential form uh, is that uh, you can interchange the roles of x and y in the differential form here okay it won't uh, whereas here uh, it, it won't make much sense to interchange the role of here here when you write this x is the uh, dependent uh, independent variable y is the dependent variable and so on and the equivalent forms are obtained by multiplication or division operation or even addition and subtraction operations right some arithmetic operation and these operations when you make when you add and subtract your solutions may be gained or lost right so if you want to solve this ODE and you are solving this ODE after converting it to this form then you should also ensure that you have uh, and when you solve this and you have some solution you also have to ensure that that solution is the full solution or subset or superset of the set of all solutions of the original ODE okay this one has to uh, keep track okay so whatever I have just explained the gain or loss of solution let me show it by some example so let's take some ODEs try to convert it into differential forms 3.3 .3 here and and uh, and vice versa and see whether we gain or lose solution what all situations can happen okay so let's take this ODE okay so your f of x y is a function of both x and y variable here now observe here that uh, the constant function y equal to 0 is a solution to this OD. Right? You can verify that immediately. y equal to 0 satisfies this OD. So the constant function 0 is a solution to this OD. There are there are other solutions, there may be other solutions which we don't know yet, right? This is one trivial solution that we can guess immediately by looking at the OD. Now let's write it in the differential form. If you write it in the differential form, this is what you obtain. Right? Um, we, we can even see, so what have we done here? We have just, uh, uh, multi, I mean, kind of multiplied by the denominator here with the numerator here and the denominator here with the numerator here. If you want to think it like that, that's how we have obtained it. We can simplify it further because you see there is a, this is the x uh, change in x variable and there is a y term here there is a change in y variable there is a x term here one can probably um, just have x and y separated okay uh, by just by so by dividing x cube to y power 4 now we have all x here and all y here okay so 
and now this is kind of easier to uh, solve because it's all x dependent this is all y dependent so you just integrate with respect to the x variable here and y variable here right then you actually have this family of solution you get this family of solutions for this differential form what we have done is just integrate x so integral of 1 over x square is minus 1 over x integral of 1 over x cube okay is 1 over x square is minus 1 over x square plus and then there will be a 2 that will come in which will cancel out this 4 so this is similarly 1 over y square it gives you this integrate this you give you get this 0 becomes some constant so you actually have a family of solutions you can think of this family of solutions as fx y equal to constant where this f is this okay see uh, don't confuse this with this f i am using the same capital f at various places to mean various things like in the definition of ode i used capital f to, re to represent the equation and so on okay it is uh, so there's a generic capital f that i'm using so you have uh, you so we have this family of solution so you see um, if I when I wanted to solve this OD directly right when I wanted to solve this what's happening Okay, something is uh, I don't know what's happening. Okay. Anyway, so what I was saying is that uh, when we had this OD here, the OD that we started with, it is not obvious from, I mean, it is not very. Uh, we did not see the family of solutions there whereas when we wrote it in the differential form we actually uh, well uh, so we could easily see the family of solutions right here why is this guy not writing i'm sorry Okay, fine. It's fine. We are almost done. So, uh, okay. So, what we uh, what basically, so basically when we started with the original ODE, we did not see this family of solutions. So, this family of solutions that we have obtained here is not uh, obvious, right? Whereas, uh, just by writing it in the differential form, we could see this family of solutions. Now, the thing is, to obtain this family of solutions, we had to divide by this x cube to y power 4, right? We had divided by the x cube by y. So, when we divide by x cube by y power 4, what we have said is both x and y cannot uh, be 0. Now, if when you say x cannot be 0, you are basically saying that uh, um, the origin is uh, not included, right? You are just saying that 0 is not included. Whereas when you say y not equal to 0, you are actually saying y not uh, y 0 is not a possibility, which means but y 0, the constant function y equal to 0 was, was a solution to the original ODE and that you have thrown out when you were dividing by y power 4. Okay, so that so that's what I'm saying here. So the solution y equal to 0, which was a solution of y power 4 equal to 0, is no longer a member of the above family that we have. So which means we have eliminated. So the original ODE had the constant function y equal to 0 as a solution, whereas the differential form cannot have the constant function y equal to 0 as a solution. So you have lost a solution, right? So, if we had given you to solve the original ODE and if you give us this formula, 
then you have not given us all the solutions, all the family of solutions, right? You have thrown out one possible solution. So these things you need to keep track. Okay. Similarly, uh, you can also have situations where you may not lose solutions as well, so, so which is why you should keep track of this every time you do. So what is the... Uh, <coughs> so what is the... Uh, thing. So, so let's take this uh, ODE, right, again. Now you observe that uh, all the roots of sine y, that is, right, so the roots or the or zeros of sine y, roots of sine y, y equal to k pi. So sine is 0 uh, for all integral multiples of pi, right. So for all uh, k pi, for where this k are integers, right, sine y is 0. So in fact, you notice that the constant function k pi for any k integer is a solution to this ODE. Okay, because the numerator there will become zero, sine y will become zero, and the y prime is the is the derivative of the constant function k pi, so it's zero. So you actually have a collection of a family of constant functions which are solution to the given ODE. Okay. Now let's write it in the differential form. If you write it in the differential form, you have x sine y dx, x square plus 1 cos y dx, right? Now you divide it again to a, maybe you can get it in the separable form. Yes, you can. So you divide by x square plus 1 sine y, you get just x term at one place and y term at another place. Okay, so you get uh, so you divide by x square plus y uh, x square plus one sine y, so you get uh, this uh, just x term y term. Now you integrate. If you integrate, you get uh, half log x square plus one. So here you see when you divide by x square plus one, x square plus one can never be zero. So there is not much change that is happening. Right. So you are not dividing by 0 at all. Whereas when you divide by sine y, what you are in, uh, doing is that you are looking at the situation only when sine y is not 0. Right? Which means you are throwing away the possibility for all these y, k, pi. So that's happening here, right? When you divide by sine y. But once you have done that you and you integrate, this gives you half log x square plus 1 this gives you log sine y and then you have uh, some constant this can be rewritten in this form so the family of solution is this but you see here in this family of solution this solution is included the constant solution integral in uh, all these integral multiples of pi is already also included here you have not lost the solution though you divided by that so that is taken care of But of course, uh, right? That is uh, get taken care of here after the, we did this uh, uh, change from here to here. So, so you have not lost any solution. So this solution is not lost in this arithmetic uh, process uh, because of the um, because it still appears here. So the what the idea that I wanted to convey with. Uh, with this thing so that's what I'm saying here so uh, the solution y equal to k pi uh, which was a solution to sine y0 which with which we divided is also a member of this so if you right if you choose c equal to 0 you have that family of if you choose c equal to 0 this cannot be 0 so which means this has to be 0 which means that's a possible solution okay so so the main idea that we wanted to convey here is that when you have an ODE, you can convert it into the differential form equation and you can solve it to the differential form because uh, solving from the differential form could be easier. Many times you can uh, see things in an obvious way, which, which probably is not uh, so obvious, uh, sorry, which is probably not so obvious when we, uh, when we see it in 
the ODE form, right? From here, from this ODE, you don't see this uh, family immediately, right? Whereas uh, after you wrote down in the differential form, we, you could arrive here, right? So that is an advantage of writing in differential form. So, so this is the advantage of differential form. So you can convert an ODE to a differential form and solve it. But ensure that in the process, you don't gain new solutions or lose existing solutions. Okay, that's it. Uh, so we will see in the next lecture. So in the next lecture, we will start doing other types of first order, uh, simpler forms of first order ODE where you can obtain closed form solutions. Okay, bye bye.